the moods he gives us enrich our understanding, deepen our emotional connection to public events which we should be caring about, and all around just make our days better. Jeff, congratulations. Thanks very much. This is my uh, no, don't leave. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> well, you'll all be happy to hear that I am almost speechless. <laughs> I'd like to thank the foundation, Jean, Frank, and the judges, uh, wherever you are, and any of the members of the foundation that I haven't haven't met so far. And I'd like to thank my family and friends. My dear Kim, who has been my companion and help for 18 wonderful years. And all the editors and publishers who have put up with my nonsense over the last 30-something years. Especially those editors who agreed with me that the only person who really knew how to run the paper was unfortunately in the cartoonist job. This award is especially wonderful because it not only honors our strange little field of artistry, but because it honors the memory of one of journalism's great heroes and practitioners. And were he here, I would say, Herb, it's too bad you're missing the second Bush administration. <laughs> Never before in the history of cartooning, or I would say in the history of history have so many ardent buffoons been in charge of a country. <laughs> and as he would recognize, once again, we're at war. There's a war between the Sunnis and the Shiites. And over at the Pentagon, there's a war between retired officers and those nearing retirement. <laughs> I I think it's a tradition here to tell a Herb story if you have one, and I do. In 1971, I came home from Vietnam. I got out of the Army and moved back up to Vermont, which is a state I love, as Calvin Coolidge said. And I began teaching school, and I began sending cartoons into the local newspaper, which was the Barry Montpelier Times Argus which I don't have to tell anybody here who knows anything about journalism, was Vermont's largest afternoon newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a position it defended against vicious competition from the St. Johnsbury Caledonian record. <laughs> the editor, um, was a man named Nicholas Montserrat, who was the grandson of the great World War II British novelist. And he called me one day and asked me to stop by. And he said uh, he liked the cartoons a great deal because they had just switched to uh, offset printing and they didn't have to worry about engraving anymore. And he liked to print some local cartoons. I was very excited about this. He said there was only one problem, which was that they really couldn't pay me any more than they were paying this for the syndicated cartoons. So I asked him, well, how much is that? And he said, 
a dollar. <laughs> but it was so much fun to do the cartoons and so gratifying to see them in the paper that I, I swallowed hard and I said, okay, I'll do them for a dollar and we'll see how it goes. And as I was leaving, I asked him, by the way, who is this cartoonist that you get for a dollar a piece? And he said, well, it's this guy at the Washington Post, Herb Lock. <laughs> and I remember walking away thinking, God, poor Herb. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking, the poor guy must be starving. <laughs> anyway, uh, brevity is the soul of wit, so I will make this short, but I did want to say that it's very odd getting the prize in a year in which 30 or 40 people have died in riots over cartoons about Muhammad. This is an awful situation. Some editors have even had their lives threatened. and. Even so, it's an awful situation. <laughs> but this, <laughs> but this isn't anything to joke about, and I do want to point out, in case there's anybody here from any of the Islamabad newspapers, I have never done any cartoons about Muhammad, <laughs> and I'll never do it again. Anyway, I want to thank very much the foundation and the judges, and Herb, wherever you are, thanks very much for the money. It sort of evens up those years doing cartoons for a dollar a piece. <laughs> <laughs>